So, a warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture, we had talked about autoregressive models and uh, we had looked at the first order autoregressive model. In this lecture, we will talk about moving average models and uh, autoregressive moving average models. So, first let us talk about the moving average model or as it is called the MA model abbreviated. So, the output of a moving average model is a weighted moving average of the past and present inputs or I would say a linear combination of past and present inputs. It can be written as V n equals I for a finite interval k and x n can be written as V n plus this and x n is given as convolved with convolution between B n and V n and so, if we take the white noise process and convolve it with an FIR impulse, FIR or finite impulse response or pass it through an FIR filter get a moving average. Process you get a moving average process, fine. So, this is the generator for a moving average process, and uh, now let us try to look at the autocorrelation function. So, we will obviously write a MATLAB program to plot this autocorrelation function, but uh, let us first uh, look at the generator for this autocorrelation function. So, or let us try to prove this. So, Equals summation one to k k v of this k summation m goes from one to k k v of n minus l minus k. closed k goes from 1 to k h k or rather I would put this in a double summation I would put this as a double summation so what I will do is in order to correct this error let me place a square here change the color to white and done. So, this and this can be written as value of double summation k equals 1 to k m equals 1 to k h k m conjugate m v n minus k v conjugate n minus l minus m. So, 
since summation and expectation are both linear operations, I can take this expectation operator inside without the loss of generality and I can write summation k equal to 1 to capital K, summation m equal to 1 to capital K, h conjugate m expected value of v n minus k, v n minus l minus m, this piece. So, n minus k l minus m is delta this equals delta l minus m minus k or this will be non zero so with this I can insert a slide. Actually, let me, what I can do is write this as expected value k equal to 1 to k minus L plus K, L plus K equals N, fine, this, so this equals HL convolved with minus this, so this is how I build the autocorrelation function or this piece, fine. So, this is the autocorrelation function as uh, a function of uh, the impulse response of the filter. Oh, so, there is an error here. So, there in the last slide it was B and here it is H. So, let me correct that B, 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 B and B here, B here, B here, B here, B, 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 B. So, this. So, let us now try to verify this. So, let me say this moving average example. Let us call this moving average angle for a fix the number of samples, say n equals 1000 samples. So, and average over 10,000 realizations, I won't define the, so maybe I can define the lag. So again, we take tau equals 500, we take the autocorrelation in the middle of the that thing and so let me define B as 1, 2, minus 1 or 1. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.2 0 0.01 0 .01. this so first generate the innovation component and then equal to convolution between x and p this and let us run this. So, sorry, convolution of V with P and let us run this and it will take 
time. So, we get the correlation plot again we plot the real value of r and we get this. This is slightly more sample than we would have bargained for. So, let us possibly reduce this say 100 50 let us reduce this by a scale of 10 and let us see what happens. We can possibly add another 0 in the number of simulations. So, yes we get a autocorrelation function that looks like this. I will run this again and we can get the autocorrelation function again. So, get the autocorrelation function that looks like this. So, now 50 this is the maximum 1.29 and uh, otherwise behaves like this. So, let us do another thing. Let me define the vector B reversed actually that will be easier. So, let me say that L B is length of B let L B be the length of B then for C 1 in 1 to length of B and B reversed C 1 or call this C B reverse C 1 equals B L B minus C 1 plus 1 this and this and B reversed you can see is a reversed version of B. So, convolution between B and reversed gives me this. So, convolution between B let C be the convolution between B and B reversed plot C. So, this is how C behaves. So, now let us look at the values of C. So, these are the values that C takes 0 0.01 these and let me look at uh, again RR let me look at the autocorrelation function. So, the autocorrelation I have to maybe initialize as empty vector and then this will work. Yes, now this works. So, now actually let us look at the middle of this. So, 50, we we'll look around 50. So, yes, let us do this. Yeah. So, the middle value is 1.29, 1.30 comparable, 0 0.39, 0 0.41, 0 0.39 comparable minus 0 0.19 minus 0 0.0 and minus 0 0.19 0 0.01 0 0.01 close but uh, this is very small so these are negligibly small but uh, let me say that let me make this 0 0.1 run the entire thing again and see so 0 0.1 0 0.1 so now if I look at it 1.28, 1.3 close, 0 0.38, 0 0.38 close, 0 0.15, 0 0.15 close and 0 0.1, 0 point close to 0 0.1 on either side. So, yes, this is the kind of autocorrelation behavior that we expected from a moving average process and uh, the kind of autocorrelation behavior that we got. So, this the next in the series. So, 
we have talked about uh, moving average models, we have talked about uh, autoregressive models. The most general in this case is the ARMA model or the autoregressive average model which is nothing but summation 0 to m a i conjugate x n minus i equals summation i goes from 1 to capital K or 0 to K conjugate i v this. This is the most general form of a stochastic model, the autoregressive moving average model. Naturally, this can be expanded as or we can extract the nth sample as i goes from this is under this condition and naturally we can extend this as into an ai this. So, the present model can be represented as the or the present symbol or the present sample present sample can be represented in the terms of nation of past samples and linear combination of ends. in general so when we talk about an arma model we say that we have an order mk order m k arma models fine. So, this is the arma model, this is the general order m k arma model, you feed it a w g n process and you get the output. So, let us generate samples from the arma model in MATLAB and so, We call it ARMA example save. So, let me call this so A I write as 4 0.2 and minus fine this. And now let us generate the ARMA model. So, for this, let me say this is the innovation component, and the linearly combined innovation component I write as V2, which is this x1 is naturally V2 1. X2 is A1 times V1 plus V2. X3 is A2 times V1 plus A1 times V2 plus sorry v2 or let us say that I call these q and v that will easier q v v 
because V and V2 are slightly confusing and I am making my usual mistake that is using square brackets. So, I will rewrite this entire part. So, Q is the innovation process and uh, V I am I have defined as the linearly combined innovation process. Now, x1 equals v1 which is the same as q1, but uh, still x2 equals v1 or x1 a1 times x1 plus x plus v2 x3 equals a2 times x1 plus a1 times x2 plus 3. These are the initial steps and in general for n in 4 to n. x n equals x minus 2 n minus 1 this should be v plus v n a 3 times x minus 3 this and hence we can generate the ARMA process and the corresponding autocorrelation function. So, let me run this and the ARMA process is generated. I can naturally plot we get uh, another form of the autocorrelation function that is it. So, this is the autocorrelation function for an ARMA process. Um, obviously, we can spend some time discussing the intricacies of this autocorrelation function, but uh, uh, that there are no specific results that we can present for the ARMA model. So, we will skip that in the interest of time and then after the ARMA model, we will talk about an important result known as the volt decomposition or a, this is a theorem or a, this is a result that is quite useful for us and uh, that is extensively used in data compression and others. But uh, since we are doing all of this mainly because of data compression, we will talk about uh, volt decomposition in terms of data compression. So, any wide sense stationary discrete time process can be decomposed into two independent processes, one predictable process and an innovation component. So, if x n is a wide sense stationary discrete time process, we can. So, all of the PLAST models actually work on this idea, break it into two parts x n equals s n plus v n. This is the predictable part that can be obtained from the past values of x n with 0 estimation error. This part is the part that can be obtained from the past values of x n with 0 estimation error and v n is the part be obtained or the innovation component v n this is the innovation component that x 
in and is totally uncorrelated with the past values of this is the innovation component or the part that is totally uncorrelated with the past values of x in. So, this is volt decomposition and this is how we can uh, decompose any practical Whitesun stationary process into two parts. So, our aim is, so our aim is to do this efficiently. So, this actually so that can predict x n as efficiently as possible. So, that we can predict x n as efficiently as possible. So, why do we want to predict x n as efficiently as possible will become clearer as we wade further into this territory and start talking about uh, speech compression. But before we talk about speech compression, we will touch upon one last topic in this stochastic models or in this part on or today's lecture we will touch upon one last topic before we stop those are the yule walker equations so in general i write xn as this so obviously there was uh, w case or for an autoregressive process I can write it like this for an process for an autoregressive process This, this is the general form of an autoregressive process. Now, we want to calculate the autocorrelation function of the autoregressive process. Naturally, we have done this earlier and uh, we can quickly say that we have tried to calculate the autocorrelation process of an autoregressive process earlier and uh, let us quickly do that. So, we say that we want to calculate Rxxl or the autocorrelation function at lag L. Naturally, we can write it in this form. This is the definition of the autocorrelation function. From there, if we replace x n with this term or we replace x n with what we call equation 1, then we get w k's are constant, they come out of the expectation operator and we get this plus this. And uh, again, naturally, actually, this is not sigma square delta, this should be. V n x n minus L and uh, we have proven this. So, this and in general we can write this. So, now this said let me write it again summation k goes from and w k. this or we can say that R x x 1 k goes from 1 to n minus 1 this piece and hence if I vectorize this and say that this is a vector p, if I call this a vector p, I can also write this R x x as a matrix R and w because w's are vectors. So, w 
w1 conjugate to this. So, I can define this matrix containing all the autocorrelation coefficients from 0 to m minus 1. So, this is the m by m m by m autocorrelation matrix and this p is the correlation vector from 1 to m and this w is the weight vector and hence we get this form p equals r w or w equals r inverse p w equals r inverse p or we can say that or the important takeaway here is that for an autoregressive process there exists a 1 1 relationship between the autoregressive coefficients a case and the or since uh, a case are minus w and the if you know the correlation coefficients you can obviously get back to the weight vectors and using the yule walker equations and if you know the weights then you can say that actually this is the way to go from the correlation coefficient to the weight vectors and then naturally using the process variance and the variance of or we can use the process variance and the variation variance of the innovation component to calculate. So, we can use the variance of the innovation component and the process weights to get the correlation coefficients. So, there exists a 1 1 relationship between these two and we can naturally go from one of these to the other without uh, any inconvenience. So, these are the Yule Walker equations and so also we can show that or uh, if I use the definition for Rxx0 r x x 0 using the Yule Walker equations can be shown to be plus this and because of this or if I substitute 0 here r x x 0 equals k goes from 1 to m w k conjugate r x x k plus sigma v square which is r x is 0 which is this or I can say that sigma v square equals r x x 0 minus w Hermitian p and since p equal r x x 0 minus w Hermitian r w because uh, p is w Hermitian r equals r x x 0 minus p Hermitian r inverse p whichever way you like it and this equals this and this is actually rho x x 0 is 1. So, sigma x square minus 1 minus mission L goes from 1 to m L conjugate rho x x L. 
So, we had uh, shown this for a first order auto recursive process earlier. The general result for the mth order auto recursive process takes this form and uh, if we substitute or we can say that sigma x square equals r x x 0 equals sigma v square divided by 1 minus sigma summation L goes from 1 to capital M W L conjugate rho x x L this we can show this for a general auto regressive process later and uh, naturally for uh, the auto regressive process to be bounded we want this to converge and hence uh, or we want this thing to be strictly less than 1 which we will prove that in the next lecture and uh, we will simulate that in MATLAB as well. So, thank you.